Since 1975, London had been involved in the Connacht Football Championship and for the last couple of years, on a round-robin basis, teams have travelled over to Ryslip to face the Exiles. This year, it's Sligo. 1977 was the last time that London had won a Connacht Championship game and that was against Leitrim. Ironically, the winner of today's game at a sunny Ryslip would face Leitrim in Carrick and Shannon in the provincial semi-final and a healthy crowd was on hand at Emerald Grounds for today's encounter. Both sides came into the game with indifferent league form, though. London finished bottom of Division 4 with just one win, and that was against Waterford. But they fell to narrow defeats to Carlo and Limerick, and that suggested progression. Sligo's league displays in Division 3 were nothing to write home about. Just two wins, and Kevin Walsh's side narrowly avoided relegation and lost influential fullback Johnny Martin just before today's game. Neil Ewing taking his place. It was Sligo who struck first. Adrian Moran, their full forward, getting in on goal. Derek Trainer in the London gold doing enough to divert the ball over the crossbar. But London settled and 10 minutes in replied with a point of their own. A dead ball pointed precisely by Mark Gotcha, who at one point played underage for Galway. Two minutes later, London got a goal. Great work by Kieran McCallion out on the right-hand side to get into the heart of the Sligo rearguard before picking out Lorcan Mulvey. <laughs> Cahill McCallion and Lorcan Mulvey then added to London's total before Gotche got his second point of the afternoon. And suddenly, 15 minutes in, London were six ahead. Sligo should have got a goal moments later themselves. A poor clearance by the London goalkeeper trainer went straight to Pat Hughes, but with the goal of his mercy, he cracked his shot off the crossbar. After two Sligo points to a reply by Gotcha, London were then awarded the penalty as Greg Crowley was hauled down to the square and Kerry referee Portugal Sullivan signalled the penalty. However, Sligo goalkeeper Philip Green was equal to Portrick McGoldrick's efforts and diving away to his right-hand side, he saved. And London went to the break, leading by four points, 1-6 to five. London didn't stop there and outscored Sligo by four points to one in the early part of the second half. The Scotia point extended the Exiles' advantage to 1-10 to six points and Sligo were in real trouble. However, the game turned two minutes later as Sligo native McGoldrick, already yellow carded, was shown a second yellow and then a red by referee O'Sullivan for a high challenge. Now playing against 14, Sligo shifted into gear, reducing the gap to four again with points from Pat Hughes, Mark Brehany, Tony Taylor and this effort from Charlie Harrison. London substitute Sean Kelly then got one for the home side, which in the context of the game turned out to be a crucial score. With time running out though, Sligo kept at London and further points from Taylor, Niall Murphy and yet another point from Harrison put just one between the sides entering injury time. Dramatically, Sligo had a great chance to actually win the game as Brian Curran set up Hughes, but for the second time and with the goal of his mercy, again Hughes hit the crossbar and it bounced away to safety. Moments later, the final whistle sounded and scenes of unbound joy around Ryslip as London knocked out the Yates County claiming themselves a Connacht semi-final berth and sending Sligo to the qualifiers. At Ryslip, it finished London 112, Sligo 14 points. No, it was a battle and uh, we, we'd been in battles before the last two years against Mayo and Leitrim and uh, we came out to the wrong side of the battle but this year we, we dug in, there was a great spirit inside in the dressing room and uh, we all fought for each other the last 10 minutes when, when Sligo were coming back at us but um, we, we, were, we held on in the end and we got the victory that I thought our performance deserved. You know, we were under no illusions coming out, it was going to be very, very tough. And um, particularly with the last two to three rounds, um, you know, the Mayo brought extra time here and I think Leighton got five or six late points to, 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 to win by a point last year. And we felt it was going to come down the stretch uh, without a shadow of a doubt. And um, I suppose the difference would be maybe hitting the crossbar twice and, and not even getting one point out of, of the boat. And, um, you know, that's that's come back to, to haunt us and that's maybe maybe too many wides as well. I think it was 11 wides to six or something. That's all. It's just it's too many misses, you know.
Isn't that fantastic? And London now play Leitrim in the first Connacht semi-final on the 23rd of June in Carrick and Shannon. Well, joining us now via Skype from London is their manager, Paul Coggins. Paul, congratulations. Thanks for joining us. And you have some of the lads with you there. Yes, thanks very much for having us, Des. I have uh, Barry Mitchell here from Leash, wing forward today. Lorca Mulvey Cabin scored the goal for us today. Seamus Hannon Longford, our captain. Shane Mulligan from Monaghan, our centre back. Declan Trainer from me, our goalkeeper. Cahan McGee from Down, who's playing left full forward. And Declan Flanagan is also here at PRO. So we couldn't we couldn't get any more in. But uh, <laughs> thanks very much for having us. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at the curtains and judging that you're in someone's upstairs flat, but maybe not. But <laughs> listen, talk us through the game. It was a fantastic result. You were leading for most of it, I believe. We were, yeah. Um, we, we, we played a very good first half and you know we got we got our scores. There was a slight breeze, it was a beautiful day here. Um, we did play with a slight breeze in the first half and I think we went in three or four points up and uh, uh, we, we, we missed a penalty uh, in the first half too. It was well saved by the Sligo goalkeeper. And you know, we went back up and we got a couple of scores before half time which gave us uh, the impetus to move on. and. We had a good chat about it at half time. We've been there before, you know, the last few years we've, I suppose, been ahead at most of our games and it didn't really shock us that we were ahead because we, we, we planned to be ahead, I suppose. But um, the lads played fantastically in the first half and second half we started well again and, you know, we're sitting, I suppose, in a good place, but uh, we did get a man sent off. But at that stage, Sligo were having their purple patch and they really, really... Um, tried everything, threw everything at us. And, you know, the lads just hung in there from all the hard work they'd done and it just paid off for us and we're, we're absolutely delighted. Ed. Well, you're in a semi-final now and you've played Leitrim, obviously, in the league. I presume you'll have strong belief about possibly reaching a provincial final. Well, we, belief is a great thing. You've got to have belief. I mean, we had belief today that we always had a chance, but the game is going to be extremely tough in Carrick. Um, these lads have to train and work extremely hard over the next few weeks and uh, to give the big performance that we need to give against a team like Leitrim. You know, they have beaten us the last few times and uh, it is their home patch. So again, we'd probably go in as underdogs. But, you know, beating a team of Sligo's quality that have been in the Connick final two over the last three years should give us a uh, massive belief. And, um, you know, we'd, we'd be... We'll be training very hard for that game. OK, well, look, at very, very warm congratulations from everybody here in the studio. You'll have a night out tonight, I hope, and uh, enjoy yeah. it all. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us tonight. Much appreciated. For well done to all of the lads. Thank you, Paul. Yes, thank you, Des. Thanks. Okay. All right, well, obviously everyone's delighted for the lads from London, but there are question marks about Sligo and Eamon O'Hara and lots of disillusioned Sligo fans contacting us, asking... Questions for you as well. Did you see this coming and how come you weren't there? Well, Des, I think first and foremost, um, we have to congratulate London and Paul Goggins for doing a great job today um, and take away nothing from them. But going out there as a Sligo team, <coughs> the aspirations were quite high this year to try and get to a Connacht final. We were on the relative easy side of the draw. But um, to put it into well, why, a how, how, Why weren't you there? Well, I suppose at the start of the year, it's well documented at this stage. You know, Kevin Welch came at the start of the year and he decided that he wanted full commitment from everybody uh, from the 1st of November. You know, but he was asking players for commitment and a very, very big commitment at that stage. But he wasn't actually, he hadn't decided or accepted the Sligo manager's role at that stage. There was reports that he was in, showed interest in the Roscommon job and he was waiting for that to come through in terms of, you know, whether he get it or will he get an interview. But for me, you know, he was asking me at 37 years of age to commit to a, a training regime of four nights a week, collect, collect the sessions in the 1st of November. It's, it's, it was crazy as far as I was concerned. Unfortunately, work and everything else conspired against me committing to that, and I said I'd be available from 1st of January. Now, Kevin made it quite clear throughout the year that he was going sticking with the panel of players that, um, that trained from the 1st of November, and, you, you know, you have no problem with that. But, uh, you know, he opened the door to James Kilcullen, a, a my own man, uh, and rightly so, James is a fantastic footballer and, and contributed a lot to the league. But, unfortunately, James Kilcullen was playing club football yesterday for his club, Balhadrine. So he wasn't first choice midfielder as he was throughout the year. So Kevin Welch made big calls this year and uh, and last year, but uh, everyone that must come back now to backfire against him. And uh, 
you know, for me, I think he lost the, the, the players throughout the year. These players deserve an awful lot more, Des, to be quite honest with you. They've worked very, very hard. They've trained extremely hard, and I know that firsthand. But they deserve better, better training sessions. They deserve better quality in terms of their tactical awareness and stuff like that. And that hasn't come. And, you know, Kevin Welch has a lot to answer for. Well, that's, that's very strong coming from you. Do you think he, he will go? Well, to be honest with you, I think he will, and I think he should do the county board a favour. Now, there's a lot of problems within the county board from the top down. We have a lot of infighting and there's a lot of resignations at, at county board level. We have a centre of excellence that's, you know, it's at a standstill at the present moment. It should, key should have been handed over on the first of January or the first of June. That hasn't happened, or w that is not going to happen. So there's a lot of problems there, and and Kevin Welch's results over the last two years have gone unnoticed because of this infighting. No one, he hasn't been held accountable to this. So, you know, we got to a kind of final last year we're papering over the cracks. There's players there, they deserve better quality training, better quality management, and I think going forward, I think Kevin should make the right decision for the sake of Sligo football and not for anybody else.